Evening everybody, it's Dana here from Prestige Dog Grooming School and the Everyday Pet Groomer. I'm just gonna wait a few minutes for a few people to come on. So as you guys are coming on to watch, if you could just comment where you're coming from. So nice to see you guys tonight. Uh, hey Harley. Um, so again, just comment where you guys are watching from as you come on. So tonight's live is going to be all about uh, dealing with customers, particular type of customers, dealing with particular type of customers. I'm just going to be waiting for a few people to come on. Hey, Nikki, are you in buried in snow? Hey, Aaron. Hey, Amanda. Hey, Jane. Hey, Connie. Hi, guys. Nice to see you. Uh, oh, hey, Amanda. How's it going? You're probably buried in snow, too. Hey, Hannah. Nice to see you again. Hey, Roxanne. Hey, Harley. So excited for this one, me too. <laughs> this is gonna be a good one, guys. We're just waiting a couple minutes for some people to come on and then we're gonna get right into it because we're gonna try and cover as much as we can tonight. Hey, uh, Gabrielle. Hey, Amanda Barton. Hey, Jesse. Sorry, guys, trying to catch you all as you're coming on. Um, Hi. Yeah, so. <laughs> My mystery guest over here. Just can't. <laughs> We're going to have a lot of fun. <laughs> hey, guys. This is going to be a fun one tonight, guys. We're going to make this fun. We're going to try and make it humorous. I know that dealing with customers can be the total opposite of humorous but that's we're gonna try uh just before we get started guys i just want to make sure you guys can hear me okay so just someone let me know if you can hear us fine can you hear me let me know guys someone yes i can hear you hey karen let me know if you guys can hear me sound is great thanks <coughs> connie okay guys um <coughs> We, I think we got quite a few people on now, so we're going to get right to it. Um, I'm Dana Alexander with Prestige Dog Grooming School. This is the Everyday Pet Groomer, a passion of mine. Um, we have had a lot of requests, and I've dealt with a ton of girls that want to know all about how to deal with customers. Scary, scary. Um, so, what we're going to be doing tonight is angry customers this is I asked you guys to give me some uh, hey Tamara uh, to give me some feedback of what kind of customers you wanted us to role play for you so we're going to role play for you tonight this is gonna be fun funny I'm not the best actor I'm just gonna tell you that straight up um, but <laughs> it'll be fun anyway um, so now I'm gonna introduce my guest <coughs> here so I'm bringing my good friend Jackie <laughs> Jackie Helena uh, from iCats. She is um, an awesome, awesome cat groomer, and I've learned a ton from this lady. Uh, she's been grooming in this industry for a very long time, and if you guys haven't checked out iCats, I really suggest you do. Oh, yes, I do love the smock, just saying. <laughs> and <laughs> you're gonna love Jackie's too if you like ladybird lines. So, anyways, um, Jackie, I'm so glad she came to do this with me. She's always a hoot and we always have fun. Hey, Lynn, I'm trying to say hi to you guys as you come in. Um, so we're gonna get right to it. This is angry customers. When you guys are charging dematting fees or you're handing them a shaved dog or you've increased prices in general, angry customers. So I'm gonna turn the time over to Jackie and she's gonna introduce herself and get right into this topic. Hey, hey everybody, it's Jackie from iCats here. Um, thanks for having me. Dana, this is going to be a lot of fun. This is uh, very important for me because I worry about a lot of you girls out there. A lot of us work alone, a lot of us work at home, and a lot of us have to deal with really angry men um, that are bigger than us and, you know, no offense. and, and angry women. Um, I've had some women in my shop that, that scare the crap out of me. So um, I've, I've got lots of different strategies for you guys to use. Uh, to, to help yourself and to get out of um, being intimidated in, in essence. Uh, one of the personalities we're going to deal with tonight is really common and it's the bully. Um, we have a whole bunch of different ones. There's the victim, there's the user, user there's the... Hey Mike! I, I love you. We love gonna, men too. But I'm going to stab you in the back. 
Um, so, but today we're going to deal with the bully because the bully, in my opinion, is very dangerous. Um, they come in, they're very dominant, um, they, they uh, get angry at, at the, at just like that, okay, if things don't go their way. The reason why they become a bully or why they use being bully tactics is because it works. Um, they're angry, they're <laughs> mad, they... Um, hey Maria. They yell at you, they scream at you, and this has always worked in the past to get what they want. And in essence, what they want from a groomer is either um, their dog perfect or they don't want to have to pay. End of story. Um, so, Dana, what do you see as a red flag? Because you've had some pretty good bullies. Okay, um, so, sorry guys, we're going to be switching back yeah. and forth. We're playing around with stuff here. Uh, so, for me, red flags. Hey, Karen. There's ways to recognize these people from... Uh, just check in or on the phone or that a big one for me is when they're extremely dismissive when I'm trying to talk to them You guys can I'm gonna talk about later on after the role play about how to avoid these situations And a big one is gonna be recognizing red flags uh, a dismissive behavior So when I say hey, that looks like there's some no, no, it's all good Just totally cut you off and they're just you know, I'm late for work You know here. I just want to throw the dog at you and run out instantly to me that is Red flag, we are, my eyebrows are flawless, just saying. Uh, <laughs> I thought you said they're falling off. Like, falling off, oh gosh. Wait, you see my schnauzer brows? Those are flawless, yes. Um, anyways, uh, I find dismissive wording. Hey, Megan, dismissive wording is a big red flag for me because it's, if they're just totally cutting me off and not listening to what I'm saying, I'm already got red flags just up the yin yang going, okay, this is going to be a problem customer. Uh, what other red flags do you think, Jackie? Um, one of the big red flags for me is when they come in, they tell me how to do my job. Um, for me, I'm a fairly strong personality, uh, so I don't get intimidated that easy. So for me, bullies, they have to really, really be a bully before I tell them. Basically, I'll just tell them to get on my shop. I don't have a problem with doing that. Um, but they, they do that. If you phone or text them, they don't answer. Uh, this is honestly, this is a control tactic a lot of times, especially if you can see that they've read it and you've asked for an answer. Um, they're often late on pickup or drop off. They think that's fine because for them, they're in control and everybody is bound to them. They usually have a very dominating stance. They come in straight up, chest out, staring you straight in the eye, glaring, glowering, no smile. This is what I want. Here's my dog, blah, blah, blah. Very abrupt. So, so those are just your typical signs. All of you have, have people like this in your shops, I'm sure, and, and all of you have it's dealt. It's general. But... It's, it's general, and all of you have dealt with that, with those clients where they come in and you're just like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And, and this is really, really normal, these, these, these people. They can be your best client, um, believe it or not. If, if you stand up to them, um, they, if you, and if they gain respect for you, these people will often be in essence, you one of your best clients. They will tip, they will bring you the wine at Christmas. Thanks, TR, Megan. They will Megan. Um, recommend you because they respect you. Cowering away from them, offering them discounts, groveling is not a way to get respect, unfortunately. And a, a lot of us do, and one reason why we do is we're women. The mo majority of us in this industry are women. Um, majority of us are empathetic. We're doing this because we wanna work with animals and we like animals. And people will play off of this, okay? They, they know this instinctively. They don't, a lot of times they don't consciously go in and go, I'm going to bully that groomer because well, she loves like animals. You, and like you said before, Jackie, they mm -hmm. have done this before. Yes, they Bullies, have. It works. They do this because it works for yes. them. They have had success with this tactic. Mm -hmm. All the time. So they're happy to try it again on you. So that helped me because if I remember that this person, this is a total manipulation. It is. It's they are it's, using yeah, using they're, they're not, it's not personal no. okay no they'll do not. this to you they'll do this to the mechanic they'll do this to the teacher they'll do this to whoever you know, whoever the secretary and they, it's worked for them it's so worked. they continue to do it it works a lot of times if it doesn't work they'll just move on to someone else okay Basically. so there's different there's different bullies the the yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. anyway Okay, so we are going to get into the role play uh, part of this which is gonna be fun Jackie and I've like played around doing this it's we're actually we just 
end up on the floor rolling over laughing at herself but <laughs> really it's still like so much fun my answer was always we just need vodka so oh that's gosh. usually what <laughs> I don't even drink that much everyone thinks I'm a drunk but I really don't drink that much <laughs> no, I don't drink at all straight up <laughs> okay so uh scenario one that we're gonna role play for you guys is I am going to be the angry customer Jackie is going to be the wise groomer knowing what she's doing and um <laughs> and she's i'm gonna be the angry customer okay um we're gonna start off with picking up so when you have charged you have additional fees to discuss with the customer matted ears or tail um and and i'm gonna be an angry customer and i don't want to pay and all the rest of it so we're gonna see how jackie deals with me Okay, hey Cheryl, thanks for joining in. We're just about to role play angry customer with uh, matted dog. I'm gonna be said angry customer and Jackie is going to be uh, the wise all-knowing groomer that knows <laughs> what she's doing, okay? Okay, I'm gonna, oh, she's okay. got, I'm coming in to pick up my pet, coming guys. Coming in to pick up your dog. Coming, we're just gonna get situated here. Okay. Okay, just make sure Ready? we're seen. Okay, I'm, I'm coming to pick up my dog, guys. I just open salon door open we're making do in our limited oh, screen span here okay <laughs> so i'm opening salon door hey i'm here to pick up fluffy hi mrs jones yeah here's fluffy uh the bill is 75 dollars there's a five dollar extra dematting fee because her ears were really quite matted and as well wait, as what, wait what a five dollar extra dematting fee because okay. no 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 yes i'm positive you told me 60 dollars when i dropped off i i always pay Sixty dollars, Jackie. Actually, you pay sixty-five. No, no, I pay good and... money to come here. Mm -hmm. Like I actually pay good money to come here, and mm -hmm. you told me sixty dollars. It's actually sixty-five. You know, what, actually, that girl behind the counter. I'm pr pretty sure I talked to her, and it's she six, told me sixty dollars. It's sixty-five because there was extra dematting on the ears and on the tail. No, um, no, 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 no. This is not how this goes down. I, I'm not paying that. No, that's ridiculous. I always pay $60. I've paid $60. I've been coming here for years. That's fine. Betsy, can you take Fluffy back into the kennel, please? Thank I, you. I, wait a second here. I am not paying that, Jackie. That's absolutely ridiculous. I pay good money to come here. You know what? This is total BS. I am never coming back. This is, you know what? I'm going to social media. I'm going to tell every single person I know about you. You, you'll be sorry that Hi. you ever dealt with me. Can I have it, please, please? Wait, what are you doing? Hi, yes. It's, Jackie? It, it's Jackie from Prestige Dog Grooming. Jackie? Yes, I'm having an altercation with Hey, I'm with dealing time. with you right now. I yes, do I not am. want you. Yeah, she's very threatening. Yes, hey. I am. I'm scared. I'm, okay, yes, I just I want my dog. She's very verbally threatening. I just want my dog. Yes, and she's, she has, just she's actually me starting my dog. to get physically. Yes, can you please send the police? I, I want my dog. Yes, you I will stay on the line. You just take your money and I'm never coming back and give me my dog. I will stay on the line until the police get here. Yes. Give me my money. I'm giving you your money, and I want my dog. Thank you. Just yeah, give me no, my dog. I'm still on the line. Yeah, you Here's your money, Jackie. Just give me the dog. Yeah, I can't. I can't leave. She's standing right in the way. Just give me the dog, Jackie. <laughs> Thank you. I'm never coming back. Yeah, I can hear the police now. Thank you. And that is how we handle aggressive cut clients. Phone the police. Period. It Period. doesn't matter if they are small big female male a teenager it doesn't matter if they are threatening you phone the police period straight up most municipalities have bylaws against verbal abuse okay um you pay your taxes so that's what your taxes go to is so that they can come and save you now if you really don't want to phone the police, if this client has done this several times, pretend. Just pretend. If pretend. you pretend to phone the police, you watch how fast they change. They will snap like that, like, whoa, 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 whoa. Yes, Tamara, unfortunately. We've and they'll say, whoa, stop, 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 stop. Now, if they take the dog and they bolt out of there without paying you, you need to make sure you've got good records, guys. Make sure they've got updated address. Make sure this, make sure that. The police will come. They're gone. They will go to their house and they will discuss the altercation and the fact that they have stolen from you, which is theft because they haven't paid. Okay, I used to work in a restaurant and those guys that would dine and dash, they got charged with theft when they got caught. Okay, because it was illegal. And if it is a man and he's married and the police show up at the door, I would really love to be a fly on the wall after his wife gets done with him. 
That's true. Because if it is that bad that you are that scared that they are going to phone the police, their wife is going to just neuter them. <laughs> so either pretend to phone the police or phone the police. Okay. If you are feeling scared, phone the police. Period. What about the beginning? At the beginning, the customer typically doesn't escalate too badly until you're putting your foot down. So there's and, another tactic, you know, well, and, and usually, to dispel that. Usually right? they won't. Usually they'll escalate more and more if they've been able to get away with it from you. With, yes, a, new, that's with true. a new client, it's easy to shut it down. Okay. But if you have put up with it over and over and over, and then all of a sudden you've decided to put your foot down, that is usually where the problems start because then they start to escalate the behavior because they've gotten away with it before. And the more they escalate, the more you put your foot down, then the more it can get dangerous for you. One of the tactics that I've used and that I, that I learned, um, I used to work at vet clinics and, and some of the people that we got there were extremely intimidating. Um, and one of the tactics that we were taught is when you're in a situation and you're kind of got that deer caught in the headlights and they're yelling at you and, and you're getting nervous and, and you're about to cave in and go, oh yes, there's a discount, please just take your dog, because you're scared. And it's okay to be scared, guys. It really is okay. Um, some of these people can be really intimidating. Um, and one of the things that you can do is take a comb or a brush or whatever is in front of you, drop it on the floor, bend down and pick it up. By just doing that, that breaks that energy uh, field, that, that, that energy. Uh, gives you a moment to clear your head you too. A moment to clear your head and breathe. Take your time bending down and pick it up. Take a breath. Stand up and say, sorry, but there is a $5 demanding fee. Ten dollar demanding fee, whatever 50, it is. Whatever it 50, is. Whatever it is. Hold your gun. If it escalates again, again, drop something else. Keep going up and down, up and down, up and down, and it will break that energy that she's got you caught in or he's got you caught in. And that is a really good way for you guys to take a breath, calm the situation down, and don't engage. And the other one of the other tactics is if they're going off, just sit there and let them go off. Okay. Not just and don't talk to them. Don't pay attention to them. Don't look at them, okay? You can sit there and you can go on your phone on Facebook while this person is screaming at you and completely ignore them. And it will calm down. It really will. If any of you with kids, yeah. But again, the that. second you feel threatened, you should be calling yes. the police. As That's just as straight up. As you feel that you are in danger, phone or pretend to phone the police. Because at some point, and it's happened in the past couple of times, yeah. in the last couple of years, me. Well, it's happened a couple of times in the States the last couple of years where groomers have been attacked, okay? Yeah. And the, the busier our society gets, the shorter fuse people's house. And I, I really, really worry about people that are, are working alone in their homes because these guys know where you live. Okay, so really try to protect yourself the best that you can, guys. Very true. So um, now I'm going to discuss how to try and avoid a confrontation. <laughs> I'm an avoidance kind of person. So how to avoid a confrontation, a confrontation. So we talked about the red flags. So if you've noticed some red flags, dismissive behavior, they're telling you how to do your job. They don't want to hear what you have to say. Um, then this is when you need to take action before something happens. Always, always try and avoid the situation so that you don't have to end up in a situation where you have to call the police or or something like that or feel threatened at all it's just not nice at all to feel like so for me when i'm dealing with matted animals um for me often if i get that person at check-in and i'm going through the comb i'm like okay this is not looking savable uh this is bad you know or whatever and they're just dismissing everything i have to say oh, oh let's do this one here Sorry. <laughs> no, <laughs> bouncing away from this guy. Okay, so here, we've got a check-in. I love these clients, they're hilarious. Okay, they've got a little puppy and they're like, I brought Fluffy. I brushed him last night. Really? I brushed him last night. He brushed him right here. See, he's not matted there. He's not, he's not matted, I brushed him. <laughs> I just love well, those uh... people. <laughs> I just love those people. <laughs> Uh, yeah. If you're dealing with someone like that at check-in, then you need to... Oh my gosh, we're having too much fun over here. Um, so if I'm dealing with someone like that at check-in that's just totally denial or and just won't take it, they just won't hear it, then I often will tell them, look, okay, 
this is the deal. I'm going to take your dog back. I'm going to bath it. I'm going to dry it. And I'm going to call you or text you or Facebook you, whatever method you're using. I kind of like writing these days. I'm kind of an in writing person these days. Yeah, if, you um, if you have it, I mean, use it. So I like the in writing. I can see if they've checked the message, you know, things like that. So I kind of like that. And I tell them, you need to be available to answer this call. And I'm going to call you with your options, three options. So first option when I call them. So if the dog is blown out and it is dematable, so not in the realm of cruelty, the dog is dematable, but we're talking major fees, more and above five to $10, then I'm going to call the customer and let them know. Okay, so your first option is, and this is exactly how I talk to them on the phone. Okay, hey, it's me from so-and-so salon just calling you. I've got fluffy all bathed and dried and I just wanted to let you know the options and the pricing. So that's straight up what I tell them. I haven't negotiated. I'm not interested in negotiating with that wording. I'm just telling them how this is going to go down. So these are your three options and I'm going to tell you the pricing. So all right up there, I have not given them any room to negotiate with me. So then I will tell them, okay, so fluffy is pretty bad. The matting's bad. It is dematable, but that's going to be your most expensive option. Then I will go into, if we clip her down, then that's going to be this much. If you just wanted to take her home, if they're getting upset, I usually don't offer that option unless they're starting to be like, well, I don't want to pay all those fees, but I don't want her shaved. If they start getting like that, then the instant thing I respond with is, well, if you want to take her home, your current bill is at whatever it is for you guys to have bathed the dog and dried it. And I said, then you can work out the mats at home and bring her back when you're ready. So if they, I offer the first two options. So first option, I will demat her, but it's going to cost. And then I give them a price range. I never give them a specific what I'm going to be dematting. Again, I only demat if it's within not going over what I consider cruelty. So, um, so if that's possible, then I'm going to offer them you know, and I'm big on fees, so I think it puts the responsibility back on the owner. So for me, I'm talking at least a dollar a minute. So I will usually tell them a price range from, you know, anywhere from 50 to a hundred dollars. Like I make it big because if I'm going to do that work, I'm getting paid for it. And they also need to learn somewhat of a lesson about this, right? So I'll usually do 50 to a hundred dollar range or something like that. Maybe more if it's like a new fee or something. And then, and then I say, so your options are, you know, I can demat. That's going to be at least 50 to to $100 in fees on top of her regular groom. Or I can clip down. We can start over and that's going to be this much, which I would still make more expensive than their regular time because shaving down a matted coat, plus I already bathed and dried this dog. So I need to get paid for that, right? So um, I'll still make it quite a bit more. Like I usually add $25 or something like that. And so those are your options. If they start to argue with me about the options on the phone, then I'll just straight up tell them, well, you can pick her up now if you'd like to and work out those mats and come back when you're ready. Your bill's currently at, and I make a, a bath and blow out reasonably expensive. You know, let's say we're talking a doodle, I'll be like $85 or something. So those are my options that I go with. Um, but the most important thing I find to avoiding a problematic situation is groomers taking some responsibility. I find a lot of times if you just at check-in are not 100% clear and you need to be blunt, like your dog is going to be butt naked. Like that blunt, guys. People need straight up blunt these days. If you just say, well, I'll, I'll see what I can do, ma'am, and then they pick up a skinned naked dog and you are now charging them 50 extra dollars for it, that to me is not fair. We have to take some kind of onus as the groomers. Like if I go to a mechanic and he just decides to fix everything he wants to and then charges me for it without informing me, that's not right, okay? So you can avoid these situations by making sure you're the, because honestly, the dog belongs to the owner. It doesn't belong to us. So the owner has the right to make the decision, even if that's not a decision that we agree with. So the fact is, is that's why I like giving them the three options. It is their choice. 
And if you can do it in writing, even better, because then you've got that pricing in writing, you've got their agreement in writing, you know, right there. And I just had a situation in December where this worked out perfectly, where uh, my husband, I had talked to her via Facebook. My husband was checking out. She threw a huge fit. It's a customer we've had issues with for a couple of years. A doodle, of course. And... Uh, just straight up, he just pulled out that phone and was like, no, here's where you agreed to that like 10 minutes ago, lady, like don't even pull that. So it worked out really, really good. So we do have to be, take our responsibility as groomers. We cannot do things to people's animals without their permission, despite the condition they're in. If you're in a state or a country where your animal cruelty laws do allow you to call and report such neglect, please do so. But if you're somewhere, Absolutely like us, it's really difficult. So the, the truth is, is that you can't just shave people's dogs without their permission, okay? So you need to offer them, and that's gonna avoid a ton of situations if you don't just hand someone back a naked dog and they were totally unprepared, okay? So that is kind of my suggestions for that. Let's do um, this one first, it's for there, and then we'll do that one after. Okay, so we're gonna go into another type of bully, which is, uh, I'll be the groomer this time. Jackie's going to be the, mm. the crazy owner. So this is when at check-in, the customer has uh, mats at check-in. And you're trying to get this diffused at check-in and get you know pricing nailed down and everything at check-in so that you hopefully can avoid all this later. So this is that uh, scenario. Just let me get this all set up, guys. Sorry. There we go. Okay. All right. I'm groomer today. Hi, Mrs. Smith. How's Fluffy <laughs> today? I totally talk like that to them, by the way. Fluffy's great. I brushed her out. There's no mats, so I want oh, really? um, I want at least um, you know about at least this much. Oh, I got, okay. I, at least an inch on you know on there because okay. I don't know what inch is. Okay, I, t so, I totally at least, at least I love this, doing Fluffy and a cute haircut. Yes, Can because just... we have photos this weekend, okay. and so I just want her. Really cute and fun. Okay. Sorry, I worked really hard to brush her. So yeah, that that's what I want. And oh, I want a cute little Asian face as well. And, okay. And, yeah. Okay, okay, I'd love to do it. Can Perfect. I just take a look at Fluffy? Sure. Here, yeah. see, see. Awesome. She's... If you could just hand me Fluffy. She, oh, she's scared. Okay. My God, what did you hurt her last time? Because she is terrified. She's shaking. It's okay, but. You know okay, what? Mom. You know yeah, what? Fluffy's okay. just scared that she's gonna have to leave you. Oh, I know. She's, Honestly, she loves me so much. You know what? She does love you I so much, does. and she just she hates to leave you. So okay. I know my okay. my babies do the same thing. My please, babies do the same. It's please, okay, don't, Fluffy. Don't it's hurt okay. My dog. Look, I just I just love your dog. I know. Don't don't shake Fluffy. It's okay. Okay, I'm just gonna check her with a comb. We're gonna go over her here. Oh, it's okay, Fluffy. It's okay. Okay. Oh, you see, you're that? hurting her. Stop. Oh, no, I'm not gonna hurt her. Don't worry. Don't worry, Mrs. Smith. Oh, you see that there, Mrs. Smith? That's that's matting. I don't. I I brush this dog every day. It can't. Be I know. Hurt. I you know, know you what? do. But you know what? This is your job. You're a groomer. You're supposed to do this for me. This is kind of like you know. I do the best I can, but I, I'm really busy. I've got nails and massage and everything else. I know. So, you know I know. What? I know. I've got four kids, and I totally get the busy and. And this you know, is my kid. And I know. I, I she's your baby. Fluffy's your baby. I totally understand. But there is a realm of what we can do for Fluffy's well-being. Well, I'm sure that you can because I have full I know, faith I know. in you. I am pretty and amazing. I remember but... <laughs> I've got those photos this weekend and family photos of families coming oh, and we just can't have them naked. Okay, okay. Well, Mrs. Smith, there's, there's a couple options here for you. Uh, I can try and get this matting out, but I don't know if I can. But I'm what sure. I'm going to do is let me get Fluffy bathed and dried. Let me see where she's at. I'm going to need you to answer your Facebook messages because I'm going to message you as soon well, as she's you know what? hit if the I, dryer and I'll let you know your options. If, for I sauna, her. if I'm done the sauna, then I'll answer it or if I'm done the massage, but it really depends on what you do. But I just well, want her long. Well, if you're not long, available you're, you're just going to have to comb it out and be long and that's just fine. Like, you know, just comb out the mats. They're easy well, to comb these mats are not easy they to comb out. They are fine. Oh my God. Where did you learn to groom? From a, like, from a chip bag or something? Like, come on. You can do this. No, this is how it goes. This is how I do it. And if you know what? this doesn't work I'm for sure you, someone else can do it too, but I'd rather give you the money, totally Dana. Fine. I'd rather give you the money, so just take the money. I know, out. I know, but this is the way that I do it. And if that doesn't work for you, then I'm happy to recommend Sally down the street. She's cheaper anyway. Bye. Perfect. <laughs> it's okay to say. Bye, no. Felicia. <laughs> 
So this is actually what did happen to both of us. Yes, so we yeah. we have dealt with this before. So <laughs> fluffy can go down the street. So I like legit actually just dealt with this actually doodle lady, psycho doodle lady that tried to pull it with the and I had the cell phone. So she tried all of these tactics on me, guys. So she tried this and as she's trying every tactic in the book, first she's like, you know what, I wanna, I want an exact breakdown of everything you charged. It right down to guys, get this. I was, she asked, what haircut did you do? I said, I did a one inch into totally hand scissored legs and face and everything. And then she straight up said, I asked for one and a half inches. And I was like, <laughs> oh gosh, lady, you did not just go there. So anyways, so then she started with, you know what? I pay good money to come here, this lady. I can pay good money to come here. And you know, we like coming to you, but I think I'm gonna have to start looking for other options. As soon as she goes down that path, I literally pulled up my computer screen. I'm sitting at my desk and we're across from each other. And I just said, you know what? No problem. Let me pull up those phone numbers for you. I've got a couple suggestions for you. I don't know anyone in my area that has the same type of experience as I do. But, and she started to, you know, back what do you home, call it? The guppying. Oh, wait, yeah. wait, what, what, what? No, no, we love coming here. She says, to me, no, no, don't worry. I'll pull up these phone numbers for you because I know I'm expensive and I'm fine with that. And I don't, I don't defend my prices. So, you know, you know what my prices are. You know what my quality is. And I'm happy to recommend someone else if that's what works better for you. And as soon as I said that, you know, no, no, we love coming here. We love coming here. I, I just, I just was having, you know, a day or whatever. And then off she went. And I was like, okay, bye. Yeah, so, okay. you know, you really have to, I don't yeah. know, Jack, you really have it's, to be strong when you're dealing with these people. You, you have to find your inner, inner strength. Your inner bitch. Anyway. Or that. Um, or, <laughs> we all have one. It is there. Um, uh, a lot of people, I can't remember all what I was going to say. It's okay to say no. And this is something that we've, that we forget that, that is okay to say no. Um, refusing that client. And, and a lot of times, you know, I, I, I talk to groomers private and, and they're like, you know, I have this client every time she calls, my throat closes, I grit my teeth. Yeah. I feel like I'm going to puke. Fire them, get rid of them. You, you don't need to deal with that client. You really don't. Okay. Um, you can say no. It's it's not going to to destroy your business, and it's probably going to be better because eventually you're going to have a confrontation with that client, mm -hmm. and then she's going to give you a bad review, and she's going to blast you, yep. and blah, and you're going to be like even more upset. A lot of times, it's really really easier to say no and let them go. And one of the yeah. easiest ways that I have found to fire a client is just say this: say, I feel that I'm not the groomer for you anymore. And here's a list of names of groomers that I feel would suit you better. Give them the list. If they're in the shop, if you're doing this verbally confrontation, turn around, get your next dog out and start your next dog or put it in the bath or do something. Walk whatever. away. Walk away. End of the conversation. I just Non-negotiable. Like Non-negotiable. I prefer doing this. I don't really like confrontation that much. Um, and I prefer to do it over text or over messenger. Um, then that way I, it's done and usually they'll read it and they'll go fine and that's it and it's done and it's over it, It's all good. So yeah, because that's no, another topic is yeah. how to fire and that's easy Someone honestly. asked sorry. I can't remember who yeah, asked I don't, but yeah, somebody was asking how, someone how asked do I get how to client. fire Oh Tamara, yeah. I think you were asking how to Tamara. fire a client that you love like special people to you because Firing, your health yeah. is gone because your health is gone. So a fire is not the right word, but move them on move to them someone on. else. Yeah, so that's how you deal with someone that's how that's, you deal with something you don't really like now dealing yeah. with someone that you that you want or that you don't want to let go because they're wonderful um, Again, you can either do it verbally or you can, I usually write them. I'll, I'll, I'll either text them or if I have their address, I'll mail them a, a thank you card and with a letter. And you just, you know what, in that case, honestly, just be honest. Um, and tell the straight tell up the truth. straight up. My, my wrists are gone. I love your dog, but he is really squiggly on the table. Um, I just can't manage him anymore. End of story. It, it's really, really simple, okay? I can't do the Yorkies. I can't do this. They just move too much. They're a wonderful dog. And I think express your and just, appreciation yeah, for them and their absolutely. support over oh, the years. Yeah. Express that. And, and again, give them some groomers that you know 
would do well with this dog. And this is why it's really important. And reiterate that you know those groomers. Yes, yes. exactly. Yes, yes. Like get to know said. the groomers in your area. Okay, I know all the groomers in Sylvan Lake. So I know, and I know their methods. So I know who does this, who does that, who does this, who's this, who's not good with this dog, who's great with these dogs. And, and I can send people out and they send people back. So we switch around all the time. Okay, if we have a horrible client, right away we're on the phone to each other. Hey, this guy just walked out, this is what he did. So we can all look up. So it's really important if you can to get to know everybody around you so that you can refer clients back and forth. But honestly, if you're, if you're um, uh, letting a client go because physically you can't anymore, don't lie. Just tell them straight up the truth. I just physically cannot. My hands, my back, my hips, my wrist, whatever is a mess. Um, or, you know, I, I don't do Asian dogs, okay, because they, I, I'm allergic to their saliva. Okay, they lick me, I break out in a rash. So if anyone phones me and say I have a child, sorry, I don't really like doing childs anyway, but, um, you know, I, I can't, I'm allergic to them. End of story. It, it's no, there's no begging, there's no please, please, there's no pleading. Um, and usually they'll, they'll be very, very understanding, like, no problem. I'm sorry that he was so wiggly, blah, blah, blah. And, and that's all. It's just, just be really honest when it's a, a physical capability that you cannot be doing the dogs anymore. I don't do dogs over 70 pounds anymore. Physically I can, but physically I really don't want to because it kills my back, period. So just be honest when you're letting them go. Don't worry about it. If you, if you, if you feel like you're gonna start to cry, I'm a crier, okay, me and my, my daughters, we, we, we call it, we, we leak, we leak. I mean, I, I cry in commercials sometimes. So. Um, I tend to like to do it over, over text messenger or a written card mailed out to them so that they don't see me blubbering like an idiot in front of them. So just honestly be honest as far as that goes. Yeah. Perfect. I, um, hundred percent agree. Oh, what are we doing next? We're doing, That's oh, we're everything. Doing, oh, no, what? Prices. Prices. Someone asked us about prices. Oh, price. yes. Oh, Sorry. Someone oh. asked us about oh, yeah, price yeah. increases. Yeah, price okay. increase. Hey, it's me again. Woo! -hoo. Okay. So price increase, um, this is a really big issue with a lot of groomers. We feel horrible for raising our prices. Again, we're empathetic, we're female. Um, not always. Not always, no, not always. Um, but I find that men, men tend to have an easier time with getting no confrontation on it than women do. Um, society has, has enabled us to be uh, um, pushed and enabled us to or trained us to cave in and, and that's just how it is it's nobody's fault it just is what it is okay so raising prices this is the easiest simplest way to raise prices raise your prices every year at the same date okay I know you're doing I'm sorry Aaron <laughs> that's why you have it easier um, <laughs> Tell us that if that's true. Yeah. I raise my prices. Um, really, you get more flack. Oh, poor you. You get more. More. My dog doesn't like men. Oh no! <laughs> so okay, so true. Me. So true. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I do agree with that, Aaron, because yeah. my husband yeah, he's been grooming with me for you know ten years, and yeah. he gets a lot. My dogs don't like men. Yeah. A lot of issues yeah. as a male groomer. So anyway, wait, I feel wait. for you. Yeah. Um, so I raise my prices March first. I don't raise them January first. Why I don't raise them January first? Because January is a hell month for people after Christmas. The most suicides are second or third week of January, and everyone gets their credit bill. So don't do it in January. Don't do it in February. January, and February are slow months. If you raise those prices March first every year, what you're going to create is you're going to create busy January, February because everybody wants to come in before the price goes up. So you've taken two usually slow months and made them busier because people want to come in. Um, raise your prices consistently: five percent, ten percent, two dollars, three dollars, whatever you want. Okay, and have it consistent. And have it when they come in, a new client, yes, our prices go up March 1st every year. This is when they go up, period. You can put a sign, price increase March 1st, put it in your thing. No explanation, okay? This is what we have to stop doing is explaining and over explaining ourselves. And this is really typical of girls. This is what we do. We over explain ourselves. We feel that we have to justify why we're raising our prices. 
But I gotta tell ya, 7-Eleven doesn't tell me why they raise their prices on Surfies. They don't justify it. Walmart doesn't justify raising their prices. The mechanic doesn't justify that I have to pay him $180 an hour to change my oil or fix my car, my Jeep or whatever, okay? They don't justify it. Why should we? So you really have to stop yourself from trying to justify, oh, I have to raise my price because this and this and this and this and this and this and this. People don't care. And as soon as you start doing that, what that does is psychologically, it opens you up for debate. And that's when people go, well, can't you just, can't you just do this for me one time? Can't you? And then what happens? And then there's the grandfather. I've seen this. Well, I'm just going to raise prices for new clients. Oh my God. How can you guys stand that? Raise it right across the board. Because then what happens is you've got old client and new client and they're talking and you're, you come into the conversation and then they find out they're being charged differently. And then that's when rifts start. Okay. The new clients are like, what the heck? Okay. The old client is like, or the old client goes, oh, go to Dana. Tell her you're my friend. She'll give you a deal. Yeah. Ah. Because you're just buddies with all of your clients, right? Raise them right across the board. Have it normal. When do you stop increasing? When you die. Or when you quit. That is when you stop increasing, Wendy. Everything increases year after year after year. Okay. When I started grooming, I could buy a house for $30,000. Now I have to pay $300,000. That's how old I am. Okay. $80,000, 30,000, 30, a stretch. That's my mom and dad. Okay. So that's when you stop increasing when you die or when you quit. That's when, okay. You have to be able to make minimum wage. And I know, a lot of groomers that don't make minimum wage. And you have And truthfully, we need right to make minimum wage, guys. You really, really do. Okay? So the easiest non-confrontational way to raise your prices, do it every year, same date. Don't do January, February. You can do April, May, whenever. Don't do January, February. A lot of times it's just one more thing that people have to do, deal with. Okay? Don't do it in September. Or October do not raise your prices then either okay because that is when a lot of your clients like the kids are going back to school it's expensive school supplies all the clubs all the school fees okay so January February September October do not raise your prices then either before or after okay um, and raise those the same day every year increase until you either die or you, you quit have it stable Everybody will know right across the board. Do not grandfather clause. Okay. Don't do that to yourself. It's just mayhem with your books and trying to, and trying to remember it all. Okay. Now, if you want to, okay, I have a couple, um, clients that I, um, that I give deals and I don't charge them. And the one reason why I don't is because they're very poor and they, make their money by collecting bottles. And out of every month, they put $10 aside to have their dog groomed. Uh, they won't let me give them free grooms, okay? Because they, the girl, the lady told me, because I tried to give her free, and she said, no, you're taking my pride away. So I charge them, I haven't raised their prices ever. I charge them the same amount. And I do that because out of every client I have, they're the ones that need it the most, but I still charge because they won't let me not charge them. Okay. So you can have clients like that. And I do, I have them and I had another elderly lady and she was on Aish and, and you know, she had a, a Shih Tzu and through no photo burn, don't, don't do the whole, get rid of your dog because sometimes that's all that they have. Okay. And she, she had like no money. Um, and what I did is I made her work for me. So she made bows. She uh, stuffed envelopes when I was doing newsletters. Um, she folded towels, whatever I could do, I made her do something for me. Because otherwise you set up a parasitic relationship. And if you try to end that parasitic relationship, then you start to have problems. So. And we're gonna talk a lot about that. We're gonna talk that. about that next time, yeah, yeah. 
If you know someone that's having money problems and you really want to give them a free groom, um, but you don't want to start a parasitic relationship, another thing that I've done is I phoned them and I said, hey, you know, I have a draw every month where I pick a client out of a hat and they get a free groom and guess what? Your name came out this month. That way you're giving them a free groom. I actually don't, but it was a good way to do it. Um, so you're giving them a free groom. They think they've won the lottery and you have not, you're not creating a parasitic relationship. Okay. Now you're going to also get clients who are going to try to bargain, right? Can't you do it for this? Can't we do this? Please, can't we do this? Oh my God, please, please, please. Okay. So and the bargainers, bargainers and the users, users, stuff like that. All of those we all are going shows. to role yeah. play for you guys in a future, in a future, thing. in a future live. Yeah. Uh, there's the user, there's the victim, there's backstabber, the backstabber, sweetheart. the sweetheart. The sweet little lady is what I call them, even if they're like. There's quite enough. a few of these personality yeah. types, guys, in in customers, and we're going to role play some more for you guys in a future live, probably in a month from now. I'll set the date pretty quick here. Um, I just want to thank Jackie for coming out and doing this with me. It was it's super fun. fun. And we are going to come up with lecture notes from this entire thing and some pre-written responses for you guys. You know, in a previous live, I told you that pre-written responses yes. are the easiest way to deal with situations in the moment. So you can just have those responses tucked away under your desk and you just know how to respond right away. We're going to have that set up for you guys. And so anyone mm -hmm. who's joined and commented here, uh, even in the next couple of days, if you're catching the replay, just comment and I will send you or Jackie will send you these, uh, both of us, either one of us will send you our lecture notes and our ideas, our ideas and comments here. Um, and those will get sent out to you. I just want to go through you guys' questions quick. So, uh, if you guys have questions, please start typing them now. Even if you asked above, just because so many comments, it's hard for me to find them. So just uh, any questions, guys, before we end the night here, okay? Um, sorry, guys, I'm just looking through. Uh, setting prices when you're new. Really, you need to just... Um, we'll go through that. Let's... We're going to go through... Well, no, okay. setting prices when you're, when you're new, you honestly need to be competitive with Everyone your... Else. Surrounding. your surrounding area i know tamra you had said i completely agree with you that we as groomers need to be making as much as a journeyman mm -hmm. in yes. any other trade so 25 to 35 to 40 dollars an hour is the goal and that is above and beyond your expenses paid for your salon if you're uh, just working for yourself or whatnot if that's commission so you can see how much we actually need to increase prices in this industry to get to that point so I completely agree with that. Um, sorry guys, any questions? Sorry, Teresa, I know I saw a question from you. I'm just trying to find it here. Um, yes, Teresa, you can straight up have a weight limit. There's lots yes. of groomers that do. Oh, I yeah. think Tamara's I on do. here. Uh, Tamara Cheney, she has a weight limit. Yeah, so I you could too. totally, uh, Jackie has a weight limit yeah. too. So you could totally talk to her about that. Uh, absolutely a weight limit is totally normal um just gonna see if there's any other comments before we end this thanks so much guys uh jackie from iCats. thank you so much for guys, coming and hanging out with me and we're gonna do this again guys so i'm dana alexander from prestige dog grooming school and again thanks to everyone in the group please invite your friends i love to see the positivity and let's uh, make the everyday pet groomer a real going concern. Thanks guys.